Okay, here on Metal Talk, here we are in central London. And we have Swedish dark rockers, Evergrey. We have a brand new album out on AFM on September 26th, Hymns for the Broken. And I'm joined here today by Tom England and Johan Nyman. Yes. Guys, how are you two? We're fine. We're fine. Thank Doesn't you. Doesn't it show? I'm, I'm fantastic. <laughs> and how is the beer today? The most important thing. Cold. Better than yesterday. Cold. <laughs> yesterday was hot. Yeah. Cold and uh, good. Yeah. And uh, let's talk about this album, Hymns of the Broken. I believe it's, what is it, the ninth album now, is it? Beats me, actually. I think it's the eighth or, eight, eight, eight. or ninth. Ninth? Probably it's ninth. I say, it's the first one in four years, and uh, there was a time when you thought you, the band was going to be no more. Yeah, was that a dark we, period for you? Well, I mean, after you've done eight albums, you feel like there's got to be a good reason to continue, and whenever our uh, drummer our drummer had an opportunity to go to tour with uh, Sabaton and we of course said that he should do that because we weren't doing anything so and uh, you know we gave him our blessings and off we went and, and then we were there thinking oh, okay what the hell should we do should we do this or should we end it and, and uh, but we still had two shows that we needed to to do because we they were headlining shows and we were already signed to do them so we needed to find some replacements for those shows so we called up our old crew and, uh, and asked if they could do it. But we didn't really have any more thoughts to it than that. And uh, we did those shows. We felt happy playing together. We found out that, uh, you know, we were quite a good band with them in the band. So, so but then we took things slowly. And uh, I mean, here we are. It's, uh, it's super fascinating <laughs> to have done an album again with them. So. Of course, where is the chemistry in the band now? Is it, is it good? Is it positive? No. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's it, for me. It's it's more positive. It feels for me more positive now than it did before, actually. Great. Right. Just, just the overall vibe. And Tom, you know, before this, uh, you've been recently quoted as saying, for the last six years, you've gone through a major transition. This is an album about finding out you're not the person who you thought you were. Yeah. And what we could we read into that? I guess you could read in a lot to that, but I mean, it's uh, that's the truth. Uh, was it a dark tunnel for you? It still is. I'm not. I'm not through the tunnel yet, <laughs> but I'm, I'm feeling much better about myself. But, and this was also in the time when we released uh, this, the last album before him for the broke. Yeah, so, so timing was horrible, and uh, we just kept on going and kept on going, and we toured. And I was like, Am I, is this at all what I want to do, or do should I pursue something else? Or so, um, yeah, it's been a it's been a hell of a ride, but. In the end, somewhere you realized after doing this for the most part of your life uh, mm. that, that this is what you are. You're, you're a musician, but you have to handle the things around the musicianship in order to make it work for you. And obviously, you must think to yourself, if you're not a musician, what would you do? Exactly. <laughs> right on the and that's, and and that's what you make you realize. And what are the options? <laughs> yeah. Die? Yeah. Play guitar? Yeah. Can't really do anything. <laughs> this, you know. So it's not a bad life after all. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not a bad life. But I mean, it's a, everything you know. I think any job is uh, when it comes to to it's, it has to be fun. Mm. Any job sucks if you don't think it's fun. You know. So mm. I, don't, I don't think there's a difference between being a chef hating your job or playing the guitar hating your job. So how have you like as a band collectively? How have you reinstalled the fun into the band? Well, having uh, the two new old members, yeah. uh, for me anyway, that, that brings a certain freshness, of course. So, and, and they, of course, being excellent musicians and, and totally super guys, makes everything a lot of fun. Of course, of course it does. And in the past, like, most of your albums have been sort of uh, concept albums. In the past, you, you think about paranoia, even child abuse, cult religion. So. What, what sort of concept have you got behind this album? It is about that transition that a person goes through. And uh, it starts with the King of Errors where, you know, especially in this day and age, we tend to, to compare ourselves to anything and everything, especially on Facebook and things mm. like that, you know. People put up fucking photos of themselves doing the dishes in the best way possible, you know, and I'm like, fucking great, well, I should do that, you know, so it's, uh, but it's bullshit, I mean, we, we, we try to portray ourselves as kings, and I myself go around all the time feeling 
half the time useless because I'm doubting myself or doubting you know the, the ability I have as a musician or as a person or as a dad or as a as a human being and I think it's sad that we that we fake things until we make it or until we don't make it you know mm. it's it's a, it's a sad way of living instead of just be truthful and be what 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 you are I mean this whole business is about that you know? mm. trying to portray yourself as a as the coolest thing ever and I mean yeah of course we don't want to see people sitting and doing dishes on stage that's not, that's not what I'm saying but I mean it's like you have to be do you, do you think as a rock musician there's a certain expectation that fans think you are rock gods and you do live in mansions yeah, yeah. They're, they're absolutely and that's quite a problem we are, truth. And, yeah. and we are and we do live in mansions <laughs> yes, of course I have it's three a bit smaller <laughs> It's a shoebox. There's only one. We call it the floor. Actually, it's only one room. <laughs> and um, let's talk about uh, the video you shot for this album, yeah. King of Errors, because I think I believe it's only been online for about a week. And uh, I looked this morning, it's had like 75,000 hits, and that's yeah. like 25,000 more than yesterday. So yeah. by the time this interview goes out next week, it's going to be past 100,000. There's a fantastic video. And, uh, who directed it? Patrick Ulias, it's an old friend of mine. He's done our eight last uh, promotion videos on this, or something like that. It's, it's a, I mean, he did our vid, uh, DVD as well, and it's a, it's a guy that we, that, that we, uh, that understands our, our visions, my vision, to the, uh, to the fullest. And uh, fortunately enough, we can afford to use him. This time, we put everything we got from the label into Evergrey, and and. Uh, so far, it's paying off, and as, as you said, the figure it's fantastic. Mm. Yeah, amazing, yeah. What, and we just won another. We just won another video competition against bands like Slipknot and Five Finger Death Punch, and we just won it now before you oh, came. Wow. So oh, that's excellent news because normally these sort of things are political. So so some of us go to the big bands and the big labels. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, had, we, had a, we had a fourth of the yeah. votes, yeah. and it was chaired fifteen thousand times on. on uh, and I need to be personal. Um, how much did the video cost to make? I won't say, but it cost him a lot. <laughs> you know what he said to me, first time I met Patrick Gilles, ever, 10 years ago, he said to me, and I said, yeah, we would like to do a video, and, and he said, yeah, I don't take out the camera for less than 50,000 years. <laughs> and I said, well, goodbye then. <laughs> and off I went. But well, I'll say it's like a throwback to the 80s in some ways, you know, because there you are. But, 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 but what dogs is that? Is that Hamburg dogs you were in? Or? It's our hometown, actually. Oh, really? Hometown. Oh, I've got a bug. It's, uh, and we've been wanting to do that for eight years, that yeah. video. So when the guys who were in the band before, we applied for the permit, they left the band, <laughs> we made an album in between, and now they come back and now we got the permit. <laughs> so, so we got up there. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. I mean, Henrik stands and plays guitar solo on yeah. a helicopter pad of, on, a, on a different ship. So, so in some ways it's like a boyhood dream doing yeah, that, yeah, Grand Ami Gothenburg, and there you are. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, what, what, what are they exactly called, them cranes that carry the containers? It's quite, they're quite high up, aren't they? That's, that's, like, like, that's 90 meters, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Vertigo, like it's yeah. I was about to say that. Was you expecting to hear the sound yeah. of ambulances? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that was ringing in my head all the time. Right? You know? Danger, danger. But seriously, it was yeah. like every third, like every minute, it was like, oh, oh god, oh, and then you feel okay. I'm not flying off, you know. Because you're, you're on the top of this massive crane, and um, you, there's flags waving, and you can see it's quite a strong wind. So, yeah. did you look down and see how far down it was? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. But it took a few hours, seriously. Yeah, I bet, yeah. I dared to, to, to close in on the fence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, it, it took a good hour sitting down yeah. on the grain just yeah. to be able to <laughs> and also, breathe normally. Yeah. And also, the, it was like 35, 40 degrees out yeah. up there, full sunshine, no toilet, no water. <laughs> And a small fucking elevator going down, and you know, it took forever. Yeah. Poor guy who had to carry up the bass drum and the flags. Yeah. Because yeah. he didn't fit into the well, I was about to ask you that, because you got the full drum kit and everything up there. Yeah, the bass didn't fit, the flags didn't fit, and it had to be carried up. The roadie owed his money that day. Yeah, that guy got a little bit more money that day. And the video shot in black and white. So why has he gone for black and white rather than colour? I think we were... I think the I think uh, the eeriness and the, mm. and the and the desolation we I was after in my vision came out better. We tried both, uh, but uh, I don't know. Some probably some sort of Depeche Mode and mm. U2 
thing back in the head and now when we were able to do it this grand it does work actually it does work like yeah. especially like the uh, the forest yeah it's you know sort of a yeah it looks fantastic yeah and i think it, for me the, uh, the black and white has a certain timelessness to it mm. as well it just it looks classic yeah at first glance yeah i want to live my life in black and white yeah. <laughs> set it up <laughs> look at this floor <laughs> it's not the total opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I was say the, the song is called King of Errors, and um, exactly what do you mean by King of Errors? What's the song about? That's about that feeling of uh, portraying yourself as a king, and even I, you know, it doesn't matter what I've accomplished in life or what, what, how, how, how good I can feel at a certain time, it's still, a, still this feeling of insecurity and, and um, yeah, insecurity, really, mm -hmm. and doubt. And, about myself and my ability, and it's a it's a tiring, it's a tiring feeling to have within all of us. And, and in your life, what would you say was the biggest king error you've ever made in your life? That goes to both of you, actually. Yeah, we released an EPK. The final shot for the before the first chorus <laughs> was supposed to be me hitting a mirror with a, this with this flag, with this flag, and, and <laughs> so it's on the EPK. You will yeah. see it later. But, yeah. So I run up and I scream in slow motion. Wow! And I hit the fucking mirror you know, with five cameras around it. We have one shot. And the fucking glass falls out of the window like this and down to the floor where it crashes. And of course, nothing is filming on the floor. It's supposed to be. And everybody just dies of laughter. So that was, uh, that was a good moment of. But I mean, king of errors. Yeah, I mean, we do these things all the time. I think that's the. It's, it's not a specific thing. It's, a, it's, more, a, it's yeah. more a feeling than a. Than a Occasion. <laughs> okay. And uh, what's your plans for the rest of the year? You know, what's the tour touring plans? Nothing is booked so far. Um, uh, we don't have a booking agent as of yet. Uh, but uh, we're working on that and, and hopefully we can uh, make something happen for next year. Uh, like festivals and, and hopefully a tour. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we didn't cho we choose to, we chose to not have a booking agent because we didn't want to rush. Going to the, with the new members and and do the same fucking thing all over again and end up in the same problem. So we said that let's release the video, let's see what it has for what, what kind of response it gets, and then we start negotiating with with the agents and of course also playing shows. Is, we have a bit more leverage now than than just offering the old same old thing. So so uh, when we get home from England or and Germany. You know, Sit down and talk with. Has it surprised you the response you've had from this video? Like I say, it's only been out for a week. And of course it is. Yeah, it's overwhelming. It's, it's what yeah. we hoped for. Uh, the label said if we can have forty thousand within a week, then that that would be excellent. And now we have almost the double in a week, and, and it just keeps spreading. Uh, I guess like wild. Well, so I think wild. I think it'd be going since, since nineteen ninety five. Is that correct? Yeah, that's when we started filming yeah. with the name. Yeah. And so, so now, do you feel like? The hard work is starting to pay off now. It did pay off many times. I, I don't want to. I, wanna, I, wanna, I mean, I've been lived on this for over ten years, so so it's not. It's not. But at what cost? You know? <laughs> now it's it's fun again. Now. Uh, it was not fun for a good. Yeah. Good time. So uh, as long as it's fun, we're going to keep doing it. But it's not fun anymore. It's better to do something else. And what unfulfilled ambitions do you have for the band? Where would you like to see yourselves in the future? I guess we have to answer that both of us, right? Mm. Uh, I mean, of course, you want to. Uh, it would be amazing to, to to get it to the next level, or how many levels up. You know. uh, just be able to tour and make a decent living. You know, that would be amazing. I don't, I don't have to personally be you know, rich. That's that's not an ambition for me. At all, I just you know, if, if we can live off playing music and pay the bills and keep the family happy, then you know, all is good. Yeah, and I, have, I have the same pretty much. I mean, being rich is super secondary. I mean, we're so we have been we have been doing so many things that if people would have paid to go over the places we have been going throughout around the world, I mean, we would have been in debt for life. So, mm. I mean, we but this is this is what we do. You know, as I said before, this yeah. is what we do. We're, we're musicians. And how do you struggle family life with life on the road? 
we struggle. And <laughs> end of story. Yeah. It's not easy being away from from your loved ones. Obviously. Of course. Yeah. But at, at the same time, I mean, you have a you have a new kid. I, my my my. Oh, so that's when it gets hard. Yeah, it's like when I've got new children. My mine was uh, mine is fourteen, so she's she, that's all she knew. You know, so. Yeah. But for me, it's been yeah. For my wife, it's been tough. <laughs> Is there any territories in the world where Evergrey haven't played yet where you would like to go? Japan. Oh, you haven't been to Japan yet? That's no, surprised strange, me. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I think somebody pissed somebody off. <laughs> I'm serious. Because <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese people are extremely proud, have a lot of pride. Mm. And if you and you, if you have a management that is maybe American or Swedish running around talking to different people at the same time, you're out. I think we're out. So, <laughs> so any Japanese promoters watching this? Yeah. <laughs> that guy's gone there. <laughs> sorry, Come sorry. Back. We could even give you 50 quid for taking it. <laughs> <laughs> and a beer, maybe. And before I wrap this uh, interview up, is there any message out there for your fans? Well, just thank you so much for sticking by us throughout all these years. It's a, it's a, for us, it's a damn pleasure to be able to do this over and over again, and it's because of you, so thanks. Well, Johan and Tom, it'd be great talking to you. The album Hymns for the Broken is out on September 26th on IFM. And also check out the video, King of Errors, because it is absolutely fantastic. It's top league, it really is. So I wish you all the best for the future. it be great talking to you. Cheers. Thank you.